Welcome to Testosterothon, 28 movies so manly they can cause you to fire explosions out of your nipples. Rambo wasn't originally intended to have a sequel, much less three sequels with a fourth one on the way, but changing the ending from the book left it open to explore new areas with the character. Sadly, not everyone has appreciated this. Like many people, this was the first movie in the series that I saw, and I appreciated a great deal for different reasons now than I did when I was younger, but I never once felt that this is a bad movie, even compared to the original First Blood, which is universally praised. And I was really surprised to hear that Rambo First Blood Part 2 not only got very bad reviews when it was released, but it won the Razzie Award for Worst Picture of the Year. I want to remind you guys, movies like Final Justice came out in the same year, but then again, whoever does the Razzies also nominated Rocky IV, which is hardly high cinema, but is also hardly one of the worst movies ever, so I think they just got it in for Stallone. In this film, Rocky starts off in prison due to the events of the first film, but Troutman gets him out, promising him a pardon if he completes a mission, which involves the possible rescue of American POWs in Vietnam. This was a hot-button issue in the late 80s and early 90s. Although the government never acknowledged this, many people believe that after the war ended, North Vietnam demanded money from America due to the part that we had fought on South Vietnam's side, and of course we didn't give them anything, so they kept all their POWs. I remember it being a big issue, and there were a lot of petitions for the government to look into all the POWs and MIAs that were possibly in Vietnam, and that's what this movie deals with. They want to send Rambo in to search for possible POWs, but he's told the mission is recon only. He's to photograph POWs if he finds them, and then get extracted out. This goes awry when Rambo's drop goes badly, with the parachute getting caught on the plane, leaving Troutman and his superior Murdoch to wonder if Rambo even survived the drop, and if so, can he even complete the mission? It takes Troutman a lot to even convince Murdoch to send people to the extraction point to wait for Rambo. Rambo is left without most of the high-tech equipment he was given. He only has his knife and a bow and some arrows. He finds POWs and even rescues one, but is abandoned by Murdoch's men at the extraction point and captured and tortured. It turns out that they never expected to for him to find anything. They wanted to say, see, we looked, nobody is there, and then sweep the issue under the rug, and any pictures could be lost or destroyed. Rambo actually physically bringing back a POW complicates matters. Rambo manages to escape capture and lead the POW to safety after a long series of action scenes threatening Murdoch that he'll come after him if he doesn't find and rescue the remaining American captives. Looking back, I think the backlash against this film has very little to do with its quality, and I think it's mainly political. People felt like it was a Vietnam revenge story. You know, a lot of people think that the Vietnam War was very unpopular and was widely protested, but really the protesters were on the fringes of society. It was years after the war that the general opinion towards it changed it for the worse. At the end of the film, Rambo states that all he wants is for his country to love him and soldiers like him as much as they love their country. It's patriotic, and well, that's become unpopular in Hollywood. And that continues today, which is a shame, because a movie shouldn't be judged on whether patriotic leanings are politically correct at the time or not, but on the strength of its own quality. Looking at it objectively, First Blood Part 2 is a pretty damn good action movie that, although it racks up a huge body count and has a lot more explosions, manages to still feel like a sequel to First Blood, because it's still about the character and what can be done with him after he escaped the fate of the novel. The first movie was about a scarred, possibly unstable Rambo being pushed to the edge. This one is more about reconciling his feelings with reality. He feels like he got a raw deal, and rescuing others who got it even worse than him is his way of winning a war that's been over for years, and wasn't lost on the battlefield, but was lost on television and printed media and in VA hospitals all over the nation. It isn't about correcting what went wrong in the war, but giving the character a chance to feel like his efforts meant something to people. Whether or not he actually gets that is up to you, but the sad reality is I don't think he did, which gives the movie a poignant ending. On the machismo meter, I give this one a 9. It's slightly more manly than the first film, mostly because we get to see Rambo not in a state of desperation and a strong desire to get away from fighting, but we see him in a state of wrath, not at the enemy, but at the superiors who betrayed him. But for the actual score, I think the original is the better movie, but this is a close second. I'm going to give it an 8.